Hi, welcome to Project Geospatial. Uh, I'm here at the GEOINT 2022 Symposium in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I have the pleasure of talking with Kevin O'Brien, CEO of Orbital Insight. Insight. That's yes. right. Uh, how about you give us a little bit of a rundown of who you are. I sure. actually would like to ask how you got started in the geospatial industry, and then we'll dive into the company. Awesome. So Kevin O'Brien, CEO of the company. Uh, I've been with Orbital for about almost six years now. Wow. And my background originally was a software engineer. Did a lot of work with defense intelligence programs, spent a lot of time overseas in Europe, uh, a lot of time in financial technology, like taking different types of real-time feeds and fusing them together to build different financial products. And then Orbital Insight came along. I had zero geospatial experience. Uh, Want to be fighter pilot in the Navy, didn't work out due to the vision, but uh, spent a lot of time supporting national security. And Orbital Insight came along and they said, hey, we have this big idea that we want to take in all these new commercial sensors and sources like satellites and connected cars and geolocation data and merge all of that into like a new operating paradigm to look at what's happening on into the earth. So lots of engineers, lots of really smart people, and they needed to find ways to kind of go to market. And I said, let's do it and uh, join the company and uh, have been having a blast since then. Excellent, well that's an excellent segue as well into who Orbital Insight is, right? Sure. So uh, what is it that you actually do? And so, you sort of hinted at that, but. Yeah, we, we basically, we're a geospatial software and analytics company. So what we do is we work with a lot of the folks in this, this building right now that are uh, developing and shipping satellite constellations. And said, and, you know, they're developing and shooting pictures of the Earth. We're basically using AI and ML and CV to process all those images to find out like what's happening happening on into the Earth. Yeah. So using the uh, the latest aspects of artificial intelligence to kind of help an analyst maybe not look at a thousand images, but maybe look at one that we've determined has some type of change in it. So we take in all of these different sensors, we process it all in the cloud. All of our engineers develop all of their computer vision models and data science models. We package that into a subscription service, and then we sell that out to folks in this building on the defense and intelligence side. And we have a really large commercial business as well, selling largely the same technology. So we're dual using a lot. We think that's great for the government because they're getting an R&D function with commercial and vice versa. So any one of these satellite preventers, uh, you, any new one that stands up, it's all about grabbing their sensor feeds, put them into yours, yeah. give a different flavor of uh, detecting objects yeah. and uh, on the earth? Sure, and then, but also taking the satellite feeds, but then fusing some of those feeds and insights with other sensors. Okay. So AIS ship transponder data, ADSB aviation data, um, connected car data, connected truck data, and then also OSINT, open source sources that are out there, more terrestrial based sources. And this again is what we call, the main part of our business is fusing those sensors. So satellites is just one piece of, they're like one ingredient in the recipe. And we take these other ingredients, we merge them together and we develop insights. And the whole idea is to compress time and distance and say, this is what's happening in Ukraine. This is what's happening in this part of the world 24 seven and it, delivered in an easy to use subscription service. You can use these combination of aggregation of uh, different sensors together as well as detections of these objects yep. to answer real mission questions. Absolutely, and the mission questions could be summit over at NGA, could be at a combatant command, could be um, at a, just literally got off the phone with a company that's in agribusiness, looking at supply chain issues around grain in Ukraine. And they're like, hold it, we need that same software. We work with banks, energy companies, business services companies, and they're using largely the same software stack that you're seeing here to answer their either business questions, security questions, a lot of humanitarian questions are obviously happening these days with things happening in Ukraine, and that's what our Go platform can do. I, mean, I imagine that you've done some amazing work in terms of managing data as well with all the uh, data that you have coming in and yeah. outputting, right? We take an extraordinary amount of content into the cloud. We're one of the biggest users of AWS. We're big, big uh, consumers of GPU farms uh, because it's ideal for processing imagery. And so we're, we're really good experts at that particular piece of the business, taking petabytes of satellite data, um, billions and billions of anonymized cell phone pings and signals off these different sensors. So that's a lot of data. Uh, but we're very good at kind of developing that and putting it into kind of cloud infrastructure and then using that same infrastructure to have all of our engineering staff using that as well for development, testing, and shipping out to our clients. Yeah, mo the bulk of imagery within GA or, or other organizations uh, for, for imagery analysis is centered around either facility monitoring uh, to some extent or even uh, uh, monitoring places that don't are not really tactical. So exactly. um, identifying objects, for these facilities is yep. and, and counting them, 
tracking the trends of those locations. Yeah. Sounds like a perfect mix for what you have here. The goal for the government and the goal for us is to be able to bring in a lot of this commercial technology, commercial sensors, a lot of these folks here, merge that together and eventually put that up onto the high side. You can link it in with NTM assets, but there's only so many of them. Yeah. And this is the beauty of the commercial industry. It's like, you might be looking at Ukraine. You might be looking at something in Europe with NTM assets. Well, what about the other parts of the world? And that's where the commercial side of the business comes in to kind of provide that type of protection and kind of eyes and ears out there while they're, the NTM assets are looking at other locations in the world. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so I have two last questions before we wrap up. Sure. First one for you is, uh, how do you see this industry, or at least the, the aspect of what you are involved with, how do you see that evolving over the next five years? Uh, we think there's a lot of growth. We think there's a lot of stuff that we can be doing to support the country, uh, support allied partners, Five Eyes and whatnot, in terms of just better geospatial intelligence, leveraging a lot of the great investments that are coming into the industry. Uh, we think there's extraordinary growth opportunities in commercial sectors. Like I said, energy, infrastructure, agriculture, transportation, uh, entertainment and business services. Uh, we have clients in those areas now and they're saying, hey, this is new and we can use this in our business. So we think there's extraordinary growth opportunities there. Excellent. My last question for you sure. is, uh, and this is completely different from what I've asked you before, is we have a, we have a younger audience who don't have, uh, don't have any idea what they're gonna do with their careers. Right. Uh, what would you say to them to inspire them to get involved with either the geospatial industry or even the stuff that you have involved with right here with your company? I think it's a phenomenal industry that young folks out there, whether you're in high school, whether you're in college, shoot, whether you're in grade school right now, to be able to look at the growth of this industry because it's growing and it's growing fast. And the beauty behind it is, it's not just going to work for a company or going to work for the government. We do a lot of humanitarian work uh, in our daily jobs. And so there's gonna be more and more opportunities for young folks to go in and really get, get down and, and work in areas that can make a big impact. It could help a company save money. It could help uh, the, the government protect life and equipment, but also it can help people. And that's really one of the key things about our entire business is like, how do we help humanity by using these tools for good? And that's really the core thing. And so there's a lot of exciting opportunities right now in the geospatial industry. For folks that are in high school and college, there's gonna be even more in the next four to five years. And the best thing is some of those job descriptions haven't even been created yet. That's how fast this industry is moving. So if you wanna get into something that's really well capitalized, there's great companies involved in it, and it's growing fast, you should definitely take a look at it. Well, that's one thing I love about your background. You didn't come from the geospatial industry. Not at industry, all. And it's a, it's a good translation to how diverse it really can be. Yeah, yeah. If you're curious, you're hungry, intellectually curious, you're hungry to do some really exciting things, use your academic background and, and kind of a little bit of an innovative slant to it, this is a great industry to be involved in. Excellent, well, thank you for your time. You bet. And uh, yep, this is Adam Simmons, Project Geospatial at Orville Insights booth. Talk to everybody next time.